welcome. I'm Tamara from Starcross Knits, if you're new here, and if not, welcome back. Today's video is going to be kind of a little walk down memory lane. I thought it would be fun to look at my first five knitting projects and kind of reflect on like how have I grown as a knitter since then. I think that the first projects I worked on really helped me learn a lot of skills and I felt super proud of all of them at the time that I made them. So I wanted to look at like what did I learn and what made me happy about the project at the time that I made it and then also with the wisdom of experience now, what would I do differently if I was casting that project on today? You know, I've been sharing my projects on Instagram for the past couple of years, and I think that sometimes if you're looking at social media and you only see the end result of someone who's been doing it for longer than you, it can be a little bit discouraging, or you might like compare your work against theirs. And I just wanna show like we all start as beginners and that there's no shame in that, and you should feel really proud of the stuff that you're making at every point of your knitting journey, in my opinion. And yeah, so I thought it would just be fun to like do a little retrospective, do a little looking back. So I'm gonna look at the first five projects culminating in this sweater that I'm wearing now, which I'm still so proud of. So what would be a beginner knitter without their garter stitch scarf? A classic as old as time. Um, so technically, I actually first learned to knit many years ago. I think one of my friends taught me, but at the time I just learned like basic garter stitch and I think maybe I tried ribbing and I made a scarf for myself and a scarf for my boyfriend at the time. And then I was like, okay, like our necks are covered, now what? I it like somehow didn't occur to me that you could actually knit garments and other things that you wanted to wear. So I, I think I came at it from a very like functional and limited perspective. And then I was like, okay, so I made a scarf, like how many scarves do we need? I guess I'm done. Um, so that was like my early knitting journey, it really kind of stopped in its tracks pretty early. But then in 2020, I moved to a new state in lockdown. I had been living in California for many years. And then it was my first, coming into my first winter on the East Coast, I didn't have warm enough clothing and I was like, it's still kind of in lockdown mode. So I was looking for indoor hobbies that I could do alone. <laughs> I thought that if I refused to buy myself a scarf or hat, then I would have a really good incentive to actually get past the like very, very beginner learning kind of barrier, uh, what is it called? Like activation energy or whatever. Like sometimes I think starting a new hobby, you have to like invest a lot of effort at first because you don't know anything. And then once you kind of get the ball rolling, it's like easier to build skills incrementally. So. That was sort of my like forcing function. I gave myself a real deadline essentially because it was getting cold and I was cold. So I went to my local yarn store and I was very intimidated by like picking out needles and picking out yarn. So that's why I went to a local yarn store because I thought if I just went in and said I'm a beginner, I want to knit a scarf, they'd be able to tell me like what works with what. So first they gave me some alpaca blend yarn, which was honestly pretty expensive for a beginner. I didn't really know that local yarn stores are like more expensive and bougie generally. So I started a scarf in that and it ended up being so itchy on my throat that I couldn't wear it. Like I knew just from the beginning that it wasn't gonna work. So I exchanged most of the yarn, all the unused yarn, and I picked out this acrylic cotton blend yarn instead because I knew that it wasn't gonna itch me as much. Um, I hate this yarn. Like, I hate how it looks. I honestly don't like how it feels. It's not that co soft. Cotton is not that warm for the winter. I think I just was like, I can't do something itchy. And so I guess at the time this was the option they had. I don't know if you can see on camera, I feel like it might look a little more powder blue, but it's kind of this like light turquoise. I don't know. I hate the color. I This color doesn't look good on me. It doesn't go with anything I own, but that's okay. I just needed to like, do something. So yeah, definitely if I was doing this again, I'd pick a yarn that I actually liked. And um, I think that this was the cast on edge. You can kind of see the tension changes a little bit. It's tighter up here and it starts to loosen out. I, what, weaving in ends, what is that? No idea, just cut it in a knot and clip it really short. I've got a little bit of uh, unintentional yarn overs along the edge. I don't know, design feature isn't lace really in this here. Um, so yeah, those are some of the flaws in this little guy. One thing that was so frustrating was my local yarn store also didn't tell me that you need to wind up a hank of yarn. So if you haven't used one before, a hank is basically like a big loop of yarn that they just kind of twist together so it doesn't unravel. Um, but when you untwist it to get the yarn out, it's just in a giant loop. So you need to either by hand wind that up into a ball or put it on a swift, which is like a tool that helps you do that more easily. And my local yarn store had a swift and ball winder. So I don't know why they didn't like offer that or suggest it or even tell me that I needed to do that. So I literally knitted this thing from a giant loop of yarn that was just like sitting on my couch next to me or like sitting on my counter while I was in Zoom meetings. And that was hell. That was like a disastrous experience. It got tangled constantly. I was like, how can anyone find this 
manageable to work with. And I think I finally um, asked one of my friends who knitted, like, how do you keep your yarn from getting tangled? And she was like, offer me various suggestions and finally came to like, wait, 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 you're like, working from a loose loop of yarn, like no wonder you're having so many problems. So I'm disappointed that they didn't like warn me as a beginner about that. I look back on it and I've like seen some people on Reddit, for instance, be like, what idiot doesn't know that you need to wind it up? Like me, I am, I am that idiot, I am that idiot. So that was a tough experience. So in terms of rating this, I'm gonna give this a one out of five in terms of cuteness, but maybe like a four out of five in terms of how proud I was at the time. Like I knew it wasn't that cute at the time, but I honestly felt so proud of my accomplishment. Um, all of my coworkers on Zoom, because I was like knitting this through all my Zoom meetings, constantly had to listen to me be like, look, at I, I knitted like another two inches. Isn't that amazing? Can you believe that I'm like creating an object out of yarn? I think that keeping that attitude about it, even though, I don't know, I guess I could feel embarrassed about being so proud of making something simple with flaws, but I really felt so proud of everything that I was making when I was making it. And I think that like, some people when they're beginners are a little bit hard on themselves maybe because they like have a vision in their head of a sweater that they want to make or they're comparing their, themselves and their output against something they have in their heads that like looks more amazing or more advanced or whatever. But I think at all times I've always compared what I'm making to like empty space. It's like before there was nothing and now there is scarf. So like how can that not be exciting and something that you're proud about? So I think that like giving myself, being my own hype person about it basically got me through the like difficult learning curve of knitting because I was always feeling like anything was better than nothing so you should be proud of anything that you make. So yeah, that is nice about this one. So the next thing that I made was with the rest of that alpaca yarn because I couldn't return all of it, I decided to make a hat. So like I said, I didn't have any warm weather clothing so I knew that I needed a hat and um, I thought, you know, since it's on my head it wouldn't be as itchy as against my neck. I found a YouTube tutorial for a hat. I was so, I don't even know if I knew about patterns at that point or if I just was afraid of them, but I wanted to follow a tutorial that told you every single step along the way. So I'll try to find that video. I might have it saved in like a private playlist somewhere and link it below if I find it, but it's just a basic ribbed hat and um, things that I learned for this one, this was my first time knitting in the round. So when I went to the local yarn store, they did sell me circular needles, US eight, because I said, you know, Sure, you're knitting the scarf flat, but you might want to knit a hat next. You might want to make something in the round, so why not just invest in those needles now? So I am really glad about that advice. And I felt really like joining the round was like magical and confusing to me. Um, I can't remember if I did magic loop or not. I think I had to do magic loop for like the very top and that was like a total confusing <laughs> mind fuck basically. But um, so I learned some decreases for this and I also made a pom-pom. And you can see, I definitely have some mistakes. It's a little hard to see on this one, but there's some like disruptions to the ribbing pattern. So that's because when I was making this, I had no concept of how to read your knitting. So I didn't know how to tell if the next stitch on my needle was going to be a knit or a purl. And that made it really hard for me to like keep a consistent ribbing pattern because if I put it down and I didn't remember if the next stitch was supposed to be a knit or a purl, I like didn't know what to do next. I would like count how many stitches from the beginning of the round and that just made it like really tedious. So that was frustrating about this one. Um, and then, it is still itchy. Like, it, it was itchy on my neck. I should have known it would still be itchy. Um, luckily I have bangs, so when I would wear this hat, I would like evenly space out my bangs to basically create like a barrier so that this didn't actually touch my forehead. But um, yeah, so I learned from this that if something is itchy, it's gonna be itchy everywhere, generally. I did feel extremely proud of this project too. Like, I think the fact that it was three-dimensional and in the round and ribbing, I thought, I just felt like ribbing looked so much more polished than my beginner garter stitch scarf. So that was really exciting. And I think this was like very motivating in terms of knowing that I could make, um, I don't know, a bigger accessory. So my next project, my third project, I actually got a little bit bold and made a little freehanded tank top. So this is with some cotton yarn that I got from either Michael's or Joanne. So I was feeling a little bit burnt on the yarn choices for my local yarn store at that point. So I also was scared of buying things online because I knew that I was clearly I have sensitive skin. So I just wanted to pick up like basic cotton yarn. And I actually had bought a pattern on Etsy, which I later found out is a free drops pattern called Spiced Breeze. So some loser was just selling it on Etsy, even though it's free, preying on beginners. But I bought a pattern and I can't remember why I decided not to make that one. And instead I used the cast on number to cast this tank on instead. So at that point I didn't know anything about gauge. 
I didn't know like how to calculate the cast on for myself. This was just like a magic number. So I needed to have a number to base it off of. And luckily it ended up being honestly mostly right for the, for the width of my bust. And this is all done in one by one ribbing. And I, again, wanted to practice knitting in the round and my ribbing and yeah, I don't know. I, I honestly, things I like about this, I like the color. I actually love, it has pretty wide straps and I love a square neckline. It's a very simple tube and I don't have a very big bust so I didn't need any shaping. So that honestly worked out fine. I think I learned some kind of stretchy bind off for this. I like wrote it in my little notes app tracking my progress but I don't remember what cast off it actually was. And I think I used long tail cast on for this one too which was a new one. Um, I also learned stockinette. I tried to make the straps in stockinette, but then I learned that stockinette curls. So I didn't end up using those, but it was kind of like a learning experience for this project. I ended up making the straps in garter instead. And okay, things that I would do differently with this tank in the, if I, if I made it again. So, um, so flaws in this little guy. So again, I have a couple uh, places where I basically like forgot where I was at in the ribbing repeat. And I still didn't know that I needed to like learn how to read my knitting. In fact, like actually, since I didn't really know many knitters and I wasn't talking to any knitters in person, like I didn't know what I didn't know. I didn't know that that was even something that you could do. And I don't think I learned, I don't think I looked up any like specific advice videos about knitting. I only really looked up technique videos. So it just didn't even occur to me that this is something that was a skill that other people had. I thought other people just were better at keeping the repeat in their head of like how many, if they were on a knit or a purl, which is so crazy because that would be so frustrating. So yeah, that was tough. And then you might notice like something about this rib looks a little, looks a little different, especially if you compare it to the inside. So without realizing it, I actually was knitting everything in half twisted rib. So I was twisting all of my purl stitches. I was wrapping the yarn the opposite direction that you're supposed to. I was putting it into the stitch correctly, but I was wrapping the yarn backwards from the way that you wrap it when you knit. And this I think was just from me learning to knit from YouTube, I guess. That like the way that twisted, half twisted rib affects your knitting is that it's less stretchy than it would be otherwise. The appearance is different. Like it looks much neater than regular one by one rib. It looks like much tidier, I guess. So that actually is kind of nice in terms of appearance, but it also ends up having a little bit of a slant or a bias to the fabric. And that was definitely something I noticed when wearing this, that it kind of, the stripes looked a little bit diagonal and I couldn't figure out why. And I think one of my friends was like, yeah, just try blocking it. So um, that was something that I didn't like about it. And then my yarn choice. So this is like a worsted weight cotton. It might be Lily Sugar and Cream, but I don't really remember and I didn't write it down. But um, I like that it was cotton for summertime, but cotton is so stiff. So this was like very uncomfortable in my hands. And I think that was pretty tough as a new knitter. I also like didn't have the muscle memory and I was using wooden needles at the time, like clover bamboo needles. And those are kind of like grippy against yarn. So I think that working with dry, stiff cotton and grippy needles was just like not a pleasant sensory experience. I remember having some like forearm pain from it. And then also, since it's cotton, it's not stretchy at all. And um, when it does stretch, like if you really pull it, it just sags out. It won't like pull itself back in like wool will. So I, since this was just exactly the width of my bust, I would have to like yank it down over my shoulder. So it was honestly like uncomfortable to put on. It was comfortable when I wore it, but kind of painful to get on. And then if I was really tugging at it, it would end up with like bagged out sections from where I'd been tugging on it. I think the top is also a little bit too tight. So those are things I didn't like about it. But honestly, I was so proud of this. And I wasn't even embarrassed by my little like messed up ribbing sections. I kind of felt like almost like a badge of honor of like, yeah, I can prove I made this because look, I, I even screwed it up. Um, but I felt kind of like, I don't know, they kind of were endearing to me a little bit. So uh, cuteness, I'm gonna rate this one like a 3.5 out of five and pride at the time of making it, definitely a five out of five. I felt so impressed with myself that I made an actual garment. And I think that that was like very motivating for me to keep knitting was getting into garments early on because um, I think, I mean, I love learning new skills and you, you hear people talk about like process knitter versus product knitter or project knitter. Yeah, which is like, do you, are you in it for just like the experience of knitting or are you in it for the destination or the, the end result? And I'm definitely motivated to learn new skills and I like having a pleasant knitting experience, but I'm really, really motivated by wanting to wear the things that I make. And I think finding that early on was really helpful for me because if I was only knitting scarves that I knew I wouldn't use or like blankets I didn't need or something like that, I think I probably would have 
gotten bored of it a lot earlier, but once I got into garment knitting, it was like, okay, there's endless clothing that I wanna wear in the world. So clearly there will be endless things for me to knit that I'll be excited about. So my next project, this one took quite a while. So this is a little, uh, this is a little vest that I made and I found this pattern on Etsy. I don't think that I've learned about Ravelry yet. So the only place I knew to look for patterns online was either YouTube tutorials. And I think I looked up a lot of YouTube tutorials for vests, but I didn't find any that I especially wanted to make. And then um, Etsy. And this is actually a vintage pattern. I'll add the link below, a vintage pattern from the 80s. And so I knew that I wanted to kind of challenge myself to learn to read a knitting pattern. But the only reason that I made this was because I convinced my one knitting friend to also make it with me at the same time. We weren't living near each other, but I just felt like if she was going through it too, she had a copy of the pattern herself, then she'd be able to answer questions for me and she'd made a cable knit sweater at some point. So I knew that she had like enough skills to be able to read a pattern. So this one was knitted bottom up flat and then seamed together. And I learned so many new skills for it. Um, I picked it partly because I wanted to challenge myself to learn cabling, but I didn't know how hard or complicated it would be. So I specifically chose something that just had two cables because I felt like at the very least, I'm only facing the cables like every so often and they are all the same. Like you don't have to deal with like, oh, one cable twists every fifth row and one cable twists every eighth row or something. Um, I used straight needles and I really did not enjoy knitting on these straight needles because they're quite long and I found it really hard to like get comfortable while knitting because with circular needles with the cable, um, it can kind of fold in and, and like not get in your way, but the straight needles were like bumping into everything. So I didn't really enjoy that. And then some flaws that are in this guy. So again, I messed up um, on one row. You can kind of see in the like very center of the back. Um, I messed up the seed stitch on one row. And again, I just didn't know how to read my knitting um, and I was still twisting all of my curls. So that actually made it harder for me to read my ribbing because normally when you have untwisted stitches, the right leg is always forward and it made it very, like that makes it easier to tell if there's a V below it or if there's a pearl bump. But since I was twisting them, every other stitch in the seed stitch was like oriented backwards. So the left leg was the one in front and that just made it very confusing. And like, I felt like something was wrong because I would look up. I think at this point I knew that you could learn to read your knitting. And I think I looked up photos and I was like, I don't know, mine doesn't look like that. I don't understand. So. That was challenging, but honestly, I mean, it made the ribbing look like very neat. So that's not all bad. <laughs> um, and then I also learned how to pick up stitches for the first time with this one. I was so intimidated by it because this pattern, it's like from the eighties, it's very terse. Like it's very, um, there's not, there's like almost no full English words in it. So I was learning all the, all the actual knitting terms like SSK, K2, TOG. Um, that was my first time like having to learn sort of like learn the, the knitting terminology and acronyms. So that was kind of a cool experience. Um, and then with picking up stitches, so I messed up and I picked these ones up from the wrong side. You can see there's this like ridge here. Whereas this one, I picked them up from the right side and there's no ridge, it's more seamless. And I didn't realize I did that at the time. Um, I really struggled with the pattern telling me just like pick up stitches along, like pick up like 200 stitches. And it wouldn't tell you like how many per row or how to spread them out. And I ended up finding probably Roxanne Richardson again. I measured the total number of stitches on an armhole and figured out how many stitches I needed to pick up per inch. And then I put a stitch marker every inch and knew that like in that gap between the stitch markers, I needed to pick up X number of stitches. So that was very helpful for me at the time um, to sort of, I didn't really understand the ratios. Cause you can also be like, oh, I need to pick up three out of every four or two out of every, like three out of every five or whatever. I didn't understand that. Um, so just having the visual was very helpful for me. And things that went wrong with this one. I mean, honestly, this is such a cute vest, but um, I don't love knitting bottom up because I'm really bad at estimating the length. And especially this one, because it was flat and then seamed. You couldn't try it on at all while you went. And that made it really hard to estimate the length. So it is way too cropped. It's like, I don't know, a couple inches above my natural waist. So that's like borderline a bra, like a sweater vest bra. And then the other problem is two more things about the fit. So one is this pattern runs really, really small. And I don't know if that's because it's a vintage pattern or what, but even just the finished bust measurements are very, very small um, for all the sizes. I think I probably made a medium or even a large, I can't remember but my yarn choice was awful for this project. So again, I went to like Michael's or Joanne's and I had no idea what gauge was. So I saw like the pattern recommended yarn that was discontinued. So I knew that I couldn't use that and it listed the stitches per inch, which was 22 or it said like 
11 stitches in two inches. So that's 22 stitches in four inches, like your typical gauge swatch. But I didn't know to look for that number on any of the labels. So I just texted a photo of the yarn to my friend, like in my hand and was like, can I use this? And she was like, I don't know, sure. Um, so I wish that I had more guidance at the time of like knowing to pick something with a gauge that matched because the yarn that I ended up choosing is like 32 stitches per four inches instead of 22. So it's way smaller. So not only did I crop this more than I should have, and not only was I knitting from a pattern that already runs small, but I also chose a yarn that was like way too small of a gauge. So everything about this is teeny and it's also acrylic. So that means that I can't block it to be bigger. I tried steam blocking it at some point, but since it's like such a, I don't know, thin yarn, if I even tried to stretch it more, you'd start to be able to see through. Um, and it's just not attractive. It's not appealing. So. In terms of cuteness not on my body, I'm gonna give this a five out of five. And I felt so unbelievably proud of it. Like this felt like that is a legit knitting project. Um, oh yeah, I also kind of messed up around the very bottom of the hem. You can see, I don't even know what I did here. I like twisted it. I think I twisted the stitches at some point on the needle. Anyway, so there's definitely mistakes, but I felt so proud of it. Five out of five for sure. And so five out of five cuteness off of my body, on my body, I'm gonna give it like a two out of five because it just looks like ridiculously small. Um, and this was actually the first project that I ever posted on my knitting Instagram. I started it because I was getting really excited about knitting at that point, and I felt like I just didn't have enough people in my life to share my knitting projects with. So this was my inaugural uh, Instagram post, I'm pretty sure, and so that kind of makes it special in my heart too. Um, but I definitely, I definitely think basically doing like a knit along with a, with a more advanced friend was a really cool way to introduce myself into patterns. If you have like a very advanced friend who knows about gauge and things like that, I think even better because they could give you advice along the way and like steer you in a better direction. But um, it just felt nice to have like the moral support, I guess, while I was working on this. Okay, so I said there were gonna be five projects, but I lied, I think there's actually seven. So the next project was this sweater that I made. So this is using a bulky alpaca yarn that's like pretty loosely spun. And I think I bought this online and it was called, it was called buttercream, I wanna say, something that sounded really soft and appealing. And it feels soft on my hands, but I find this unbearably itchy to wear, which again, like, why was I going for more alpaca? Clearly alpaca and I, they're the cutest animals, but we were not getting along. So I don't know why I went with that route. At this point it's like February, March, 2021. and. I knew I wanted to make a sweater because that just seemed like a very grown up knitting thing to do. I think it's a ski lodge pullover. I chose this one because it had an accompanying YouTube tutorial. So you pay for the pattern, but the tutorial walks you through all the different techniques. And I felt very much like I needed to be handheld through the process. And I wanted to know that I was gonna have guidance on like, not just general techniques, but like how do the pieces actually come together. And this is a bottom up raglan. So things that I like about it, I like that I, I like that I chose to make a sweater. Like I felt very excited about that idea. Um, I also tried some color blocking. So needing to join a new color that felt very intimidating to me. And I was glad to like kind of give myself an extra challenge on this project. Um, I'd never done raglan decreases before. So I thought that was kind of cool. I liked, um, this was sort of my first time seeing shaping take a more like visible form. And I think I also, I can't remember if the pattern has this or if I just added in a little bit of balloon sleeve. I don't know, I'd have to double check on that. But um, I think that I, I think I might have added that in based off of um, like the hat that I made because I knew that you could do some decreases, but maybe that's in the pattern, I'm not sure. So things that I don't like about this or I would do differently. So I hate the yarn, like I literally can't stand this. I tried to give the sweater away. <laughs> None of my friends wanted it. Um, even while I was knitting it, there was like fluff coming up out of it. And I think that should have been a sign to me. Like I feel, even right now, I feel like mildly itchy having it next to me. That should have been a sign. Like don't ignore it if you're early on in a project and you're like feeling weird about the yarn. Don't ignore that. Follow, follow your uh, intuition there. And then, so otherwise, I just don't like bottom up construction very much. And I feel like a bottom up raglan in spe like specifically was kind of a weird project to choose because you have to knit the sleeves from the wrist to basically the underarm and that can make it kind of hard to tell where on your arm the sleeves are actually gonna fall. Um, it also made it hard to like figure out the length, made it hard to try on. So I didn't know that there were top down raglans. So if I were to do this again as a beginner, I think I probably just wouldn't pick this pattern or this yarn. So basically this one wouldn't exist, but um, I know that Handmade by Florence has a free pattern and a tutorial for a raglan top down sweater as like a beginner friendly introduction to patterns and to sweaters. And 
I, that didn't exist when I was doing this a couple years ago, but I think that would be a better choice, doing something top down. I think um, for beginners, great, because one, you can try it on as you go, and then two, you also kind of get a little bit more instant gratification. Like it starts to look like a sweater earlier on, and I think that to me is very motivating. Like if I'm knitting top down, I'm always like doing the collar before I move on to the sleeves, for instance, because I think it just feels nice to have something that is like looking legit earlier on. So in terms of pride of this one, I think at the time I felt like about a 3.5 because while doing a sweater was more complicated, um, I think compared to the vest, it didn't feel like there were so many new skills that I was learning. So I think early on, I didn't love the experience of making it. I didn't love the yarn. So I, I think I felt like a three out of five on the pride and like a two out of five on the cuteness. Um, I also like, I didn't end up loving this color, this kind of green, is a little more like sea foamy versus I wish it had been kind of a sage green. And yeah, so I was like pretty lukewarm about this project even at the time. I thought of one more thing to say about this project is that I actually switched to continental knitting on this project. So after I worked on the vest, this one was all, you can see in between the cables, it's all seed stitch where you alternate knit and purl. And I was doing that in English and with English style knitting, you have to like kind of move the needle a lot and move your hand if you're holding the working yarn in your right hand like move it a lot to get it back and forth when you're knitting and purling you have to like go from the front and the back and that just felt like it took forever and i had i think at this point i would started like following other knitters on instagram and i learned about continental and i also had seen continental in some of the tutorials i was looking online and i decided that for this sweater i was going to force myself to knit the entire thing continental as like Kind of a forcing function to get myself to learn. It was kind of thicker yarn. I felt like it would be a little bit easier to get the motions down. And I wanted to like give myself basically a deadline, like force myself to do it. So that was what I did with this one. And honestly, I'm so happy. I love Continental now. I find like ribbing and seed stitch, et cetera, to be honestly satisfying. I like going back and forth. Whereas when I was knitting with English, I found it really tedious and like very hard to get in a flow for myself. I also think personally that Continental for me is a little bit easier to knit quickly and to knit without looking. And I don't think that those are things that you necessarily should um, aspire to do. Like it's totally fine if you love the way that you knit, don't change it as long as it's not causing you pain. Um, but I really liked, there's like fuzz flying around from this thing. I really liked being able to knit faster and to be able to knit without looking because like I said, I was sitting through a lot of Zoom meetings and um, watching TV and it just, I feel like kind of unlocked the ability to do to knit in more situations like i wouldn't always have to look exactly at my work i could also like watch something or look up and make eye contact etc so it was a benefit for me so i was really happy with that and then i chose this cardigan as a kit from wool in the gang if you also learn to knit in lockdown or even if you just were on knitting social media during lockdown wool in the gang was like everywhere doing a ton of marketing and i think especially because um they're marketing kits so that you're a beginner you don't have to think about buying the yarn picking the needle size picking the pattern etc it can just all come together and you have like fewer decisions to make i definitely as a beginner found that very appealing because the most stressful part of knitting for me at that point was choosing what yarn and needle size to use. So having all those decisions made for me was just super appealing. So this is the Penny Cardigan kit. And I really didn't like look that much up about it beforehand. Um, I think I saw a couple people on Instagram had made it, but I didn't really like know that much about the techniques used. So this is in a bottom up, you knit its stripes and then you use yarn to weave through the reverse side of the, of the fabric. So you have the stockinette, stripes are on the inside and then you take the pearl bumps on the wrong side of the work, which is reverse stockinette, and you weave the strands up and down through those pearl bumps to create this pattern. So you can see that these actually are not square. They're rectangles that are wider than they are tall. And that's because I pulled too tightly when I was weaving the strands. And it ended up being way more cropped because it's shorter than it was supposed to be. So this hits like basically at my natural waist. I'm actually happy with the length of it, but the major problem that I had was that after I finished knitting an entire sleeve and weaving in all of the strands, it was like just past my elbow, which was way too short. And I was never gonna wear it if that's how short it was. So I had to knit an entire extra sleeve. And I am really glad that I at least like stopped and did the weaving in before I went and knitted the second sleeve because then I could just 
adjust it. So I basically knitted and did weaving on three sleeves for this. So that was really frustrating. It does create a very dense fabric, which I actually think is really nice. And because the cotton's so soft, it doesn't like bunch up uncomfortably. I was a little bit worried about how it would feel on my elbow joints, but I haven't had a problem with that at all. I find it super comfortable to wear. Also because my gauge, my row gauge was so off from the original, um, I found that I had a lot of trouble with picking up the ribbed button bands and the neck. The number of stitches it told me to do ended up creating this like super ruffled, horrible looking button band because I was picking up the same number of stitches meant for like, let's say this much length, but I only had that much length. So when you fit that length of ribbing in that much, you'll get a ruffle because it's like more stitches than can really fit. So I did have to redo the whole button band and the neck band. That was kind of an interesting learning experience for me though, because I learned more about like understanding the ratio of row to stitch gauge when you're doing button bands. So I looked up some videos, I think again, Roxanne Richardson, my hero, um, she had some good videos on that that I'll link below if that's like something that you struggled with. Um, so that was a cool learning experience. And then the other thing that I did with this one that I'm actually really happy I did was the original uh, pattern doesn't actually have buttonholes on it. It's just a jacket with no buttonholes, so no way to close it. And I was like, I'm never gonna wear that if I can't actually button up my cardigan. And I like the look of buttons. So I actually knitted like a tiny prototype and I learned how to make a buttonhole and I practiced on like a tiny swatch just to like try it out before I went all in. And that was really cool. That was my first time like really practicing out of technique and not just like winging it on my project. And that's something that I do all the time now. Like if you've watched my design with me video for a red tank top that I made, you can see I like make a little prototype as I'm designing and it helps me visualize things, but also like helps you practice techniques and like see how they're actually gonna turn out. So um, yeah, in terms of cuteness for this one, like five out of five. <laughs> and also in terms of pride, I mean, still five out of five. I honestly like can't believe that I saw this project through to completion. I think that if I picked it up now, I probably would have given up earlier um, because I think at the time I felt like knitting was this really new thing to me and I didn't want to lose any of my momentum. So I felt very like goal oriented in terms of making sure that I finished everything that I started. And then I also had started sharing my projects on Instagram. And I honestly think that like that gave me a sense of accountability that I didn't have before, which kind of makes me feel like I should share more of my works in progress. I kind of stopped when I started designing my own things, I feel like I started sharing finished objects more than works in progress, but um, sharing them on my knitting podcast has definitely helped me like feel a little more accountable for finishing some projects that otherwise might like lag behind a little bit. But, um, and when I finished this, I, I felt like this was the first thing that I was like, I'm so impressed with myself. Um, Wool and the gang also like reshared a photo of it. And I think that I like passed maybe 500 Instagram subscribers after posting this sweater. And that felt like a really big milestone for me. Um, so yeah, this was a great experience, but I'm like, would I have actually tackled this project if I knew upfront how intense it would have been? Probably not, um, especially because I will say I've listened to so many audiobooks in like the two months that I worked on this because you can't watch something at the same time that you're weaving in the strands. So, um, that was kind of funny. I like really blew my, my reading goals out of the water for 2021. I think I read like 30 something books. So these are all of my early knitting projects. I hope it was kind of fun to see like progression along the way. If you're still a beginner, like we all started as beginners. And as long as you like, I don't know, are encouraging of yourself and like feel proud about the things that you're making. And again, like don't compare it against other people's work, compare it against something literally not existing in the world. Like if you brought something from not existing into existing, you should feel proud of it no matter how many flaws there are. And like, I still feel proud of all of these projects. I feel like I learned a lot through the process and I'm actually really glad that I like wrote down in a kind of a Google doc. I kept track of all the things I learned with each one. And it's kind of nice to have that almost as like a little diary to look back and be like, wow, I was so, so proud of like learning how to knit two stitches together. Like celebrate the small wins along your journey basically. Um, and just encourage yourself, be proud of bringing things into existence. Making things is so cool and worth celebrating no matter what the end result looks like. I am seriously so grateful always to have had this amazing knitting community to share my work with and get encouragement from and learn so many things from. So thank you so much for being a part of it. Um, if you'd like to see more knitting videos and you're not subscribed, you can subscribe now. I post every Friday and I also share all my projects on my Instagram and I have a mailing list too if you wanna hear about tester calls and things like that. Um, so, 
yeah, this was really fun. And uh, now I feel, I feel proud of myself and good about all the skills that I've learned. So I hope that you leave feeling grateful today for all of the time that you've invested in learning your own skills, whether it's like knitting or another craft or hobby or profession or whatever. Um, I don't know, we all start as beginners and it's really great to celebrate the ways that you've grown along the way. So thank you so much for hanging out and I'll see you next time.